All right, what's going on, y'all? Let's talk about um let's go into it, man. Let's talk about the glutes, man. The glutes. The glutes. So glutes are a very powerful lower body muscle group, and a lot of people don't really understand how powerful the glutes are. The glutes are actually considered to be the most powerful muscle group in the lower body. Um, and they're very responsible for a lot of the more um explosive movements, jumping running um you know sprints and stuff like that your glutes are, are huge and kind of de- generating that explosiveness that helps to push you forward um glutes are also very responsible for balancing out your pelvis so if you think about your pelvis your pelvis has a lot of different muscles attached to it and your glutes are attached um kind of to the back and they help to pull your pelvis back and i'm going to talk a little bit on my dry erase board about how they help to um how they help balance out your pelvis a bit. You'll see more on that later. But anyhow, I'm talking about glutes because it's a whole lot of, um, a lot of videos, a lot of social media content on glutes. You know, it's a lot of, um, you know, um, emphasis these days on building, you know, glutes for aesthetic reasons and all that kind of stuff. And that's cool. Um, the main reason I'm recording this video is because, um, From a personal training standpoint, physiology, all that kind of stuff, it's important to understand that the gluteal muscle group, um, and we're going to mainly talk about the gluteus maximus, which is like the big muscle back there, um, it works in concert with other muscle groups. So like what happens is um, if imbalanced, it can actually start to cause issues um, with your body, like in regard to um pulling on your bones the wrong way or in an imbalanced way leading to joint issues back pain and all that kind of stuff so let's go ahead to the video that i recorded um where i'm on my dry erase board where i i explain some more of this stuff and um we'll get into it all right y'all so first of all don't hate on my drawing like for those of you who really know me you know i really can draw um but we're not worried about that now we're just talking about physiology um you know and stuff like that so anyhow examine my um guy here um who's standing side profile and whatnot now i want to illustrate why it's important to make sure that you kind of like if you're training glutes that you kind of balance out the way that you train them okay so check it out so you see this is i just call him harold This is Harold. This is these are his glutes. All right. So, anyhow, the thing to understand about Harold is that with or with anybody with you is that every muscle group has an antagonist. Now you know you heard from literature class an antagonist is like the person in the story who kind of who is kind of working against the protagonist almost like the bad person but um, an antagonist muscle group is not bad it just works the opposite way so if the glutes are right here then what is the antagonist muscle group the main muscle the main antagonist muscle group is actually like here and it's the hip flexors. Now, the hip flexors are kind of like they're in front of the thigh and kind of inner. So like, you know, you have your quads, which are like the top of your thighs. And then you have muscles that kind of go more so toward the inner part of your thigh. And they're called hip flexors. They flex the hip, which means that they bring the knee so they bring the knee toward the chest. So it's like lifting your leg in like a lateral. If that's if he lifted his leg up, you flex the hip by lifting your leg at the hip up toward your chest. Okay, so that's what happens there. Now, the glutes are, um, especially the gluteus maximus, which is like the bigger muscle um, in the gluteus group the hip extend extenders so 
So by extending the hip, that means that they help to push the hip forward. So, you know, like, for example, one of the main moves that people tend to do are um, bridges, hip bridges, where you kind of push your pelvis out. And even if you do that, you can feel the glutes uh, flex. So, like, glutes help to push the body forward there at the hips. And that's extending the hip. But then also to keep, it, that keep in mind that as part of hip extension, they also will pull... They help to pull the leg back. So if you do like a reverse leg lift, then you'll feel, or even a side leg lift, you'll feel it too. But a reverse leg lift, you'll feel the glutes contract. So that's if, you know, again, if you have the leg like this. Now, obviously, <laughs> just lifting the leg straight back like that, it's kind of hard. It's kind of nearly impossible to do it horizontal perfectly like that. So I'm just doing that for the sake of, of illustration. Now, because the hip flexors are an antagonist muscle group for the hip extenders, the glutes, what happens is if you just focus more so on building your glutes alone, then you can end up overpowering your hip flexors. Now, the good thing about this is that most of us can stand to have stronger glutes because of the fact that we sit down so much. So the way that we sit down in our society makes our it makes our glutes weak and it makes our hip flexors tight so so what happens is when i say tight it's like your hip flexors kind of like, like get shorter and your glutes meanwhile are sitting there kind of inactivated um you know in a lot of other countries people don't even do all this sitting like we do they don't use chairs that's really the bad the issue they don't really use chairs so they're like actually kind of squat in a deep squat position and so that actually helps to keep it isn't your muscles aren't inactive necessarily in that stage or whatever and then of course to get out of a squat is like especially a deep squat is major glute action so the way that we sit in our society makes our glutes weak and it makes our hip flexors tight and so what happens is your pelvis here if the if these are tight that means the muscle group here in your inner thigh shrinks and then your glutes, which would normally be helping to pull your hips this way, they're weak, so they're not really doing their job. So what happens is your pelvis kind of goes more so like this. It goes more so like that. I actually, no, 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 I meant to say in the other, other direction. Sorry about that. Other way. So your glutes, which would normally be kind of pulling more so down, are weak, so they're not really doing their job. And your hip flexors are tight, so they pull your pelvis up. Both of these muscle groups work at your pelvis. So you get what's called hyperlordosis, where you're, you get more of a curvature in your spine, your lower spine. And that actually causes, that can cause, among other things, back pain. Okay? So it really is actually important for a lot of us to strengthen our glutes. Okay? Now, but consider this too. This is why I want to say that like, you got to make sure you're balanced. We put a lot of emphasis these days on building glutes. And like I said, it's not to say that you shouldn't emphasize building glutes. But you also have to make sure that you're doing other things too, which I'll talk about later. But if this can happen with tight hip flexors and with weak glutes, if you were to do overemphasis of strengthening your glutes, like really, really, really... Uh, making very powerful, you want powerful glute muscles. But if you were to overemphasize that, then you figure the gluteal muscle group will pull your hip down like that and you'll develop what's called sway back. Where your pelvis is kind of moved back like this. If you can kind of like imagine that. And so that actually will take out some of the curvature in your spine, which the natural curvature, you should actually have a little bit of curvature in your lower spine, but I take it all, that can take more of it out and that also in and of itself can cause uh, back pain. So, so in short, it's important to make sure that you actually train your glutes, but then it's also important to make sure that you 
balance it out by like addressing, among other things, your hip flexors. Now, all that said, we know now that the glutes extend the hip, they push the pelvis forward, they help to kick the leg back. Um, okay, and so and then we know that like the hip flexors help to extend the hip, I mean, flex the hip, I'm sorry, they help to flex the hip, bring the, bringing the knee closer to the front of the body. So you need to have balance in those when it comes to training your glutes, okay? Now, first off, make sure that you emphasize compound movements like squats, deadlifts, lunges, um, and other exercises that move your muscles, make your muscles kind of move in concert in a natural way. You figure like squats, for example. Squats are, are great for glutes, especially if you lean back when you're doing the squat. And I'm going to put some links to some videos in um in the description that show some of these moves. But squats, when you lean back, especially emphasize the glutes. But they're good overall because it's a natural movement to squat, okay? It's going to have a lot of those muscles moving in synergy and whatnot. You're going to, um, you're going to automatically exercise a lot of those together. Um, deadlifts. Deadlifts tend to emphasize like lower back. They also do glutes and stuff as well. Um, but again, what you have is allowing those muscles kind of move kind of in a more natural way in concert. Um, lunges are great for glutes. They're really good for um, quads, hamstrings. Again, moving your body mostly in a more natural way. Now, and when I say compound movements, I say that in contrast to what you would call simple moves that tend to really kind of narrow or isolated um, movements that isolate a muscle group. So like an exercise that would more so like stop the movement of certain muscle groups. Like if you're sitting in a chair or something like that, and then you're squeezing, squeezing the glutes. Now, the, the, the good thing about most exercises for the glutes, it seems that even if you use a machine, like a cable machine or something like that, like where you're doing like a, a glute kickback where you have to like lift weight by bringing your 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 uh, leg back and, and doing and squeezing muscle. Like now you are stabilizing your upper body. So that could be taking out a little bit of like the stabilizing action of, you know, like your your abs. But at the same time, it's still considered a compound movement. Um, so a lot of glute exercises, you kind of have to, unless you're just sitting there and flexing your glutes, you know, um, in an isolated manner, a lot of moves actually do move your body in a compound manner. So that's actually a good thing. Now, if you do exercises that tend to mostly target the glutes, you know, and I'm kind of thinking about stuff like um, uh, hip thrust or, or uh, um, what do you call them? The bridges where you lay on your back with your upper, and with your upper back still on the, on the floor you essentially do like a pelvic thrust that makes your body straight from your back to your knees. If you do those type of things and other moves that tend to like more so focus only on the glutes, it's probably a good exercise, a good idea to do exercises that tend to target, among other things, your hip flexors, okay? So like leg lifts, straight leg lifts, like maybe laying on the ground after you do your bridges, and 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 just like lifting your leg up, okay? And you don't even have to li lift it up all the way. Matter of fact, after you lift your leg past a certain point, then the emphasis kind of comes off of your muscles because they're not really, it's not any resistance the more you come up to like directly vertical. But you might want to do stuff like that too to make sure you're also strengthening the hip flexors and kind of balancing your pelvis out, okay? Um, another thing is remember... Um, that you can do exercises like hill sprints, stairs. It, it doesn't even have to be sprints, especially if you're not really ready for that. You can even just walk up. But those are ways of adding resistance in a more dynamic way and also moving your body in a natural movement pattern um, in, in, in training your glutes and other muscles. Think about, if you think about, you know, going up stairs, hill sprints and stuff like that, you know, your your glutes are really pushing you up the hill and then you're having to drive your knee. So you have to pull that leg up. And so that's actually doing a lot of hip flexor action there. So very good actually for training glutes and hip flexors in a more balanced way. 
Um, remember, one of the major reasons that our glutes tend to be weak is because we sit down too much. So you want to try to um, it, it, not only weak glutes, but also um, uh, tight hip flexors. So we want to stretch our hip flexors. Okay. And then we want to also, we want to um, try to like, see if you can reduce how much you sit down. I'm sitting down now, of course, um, but try, try to take a lot of opportunities to get up and move around to try to like counteract that weakening glute um, activity of sitting. And of course, remember it also, it tightens your hip flexors as well. Okay. So um, as far as stretching your hip flexors, one way of doing that is to um quiet stretch will actually do that to some degree where you stand up and you bring you grab your ankle with your hand and then pull back and stretch the front of your thigh that's going to do a little hip flexor stretch um but even also like sitting reach sitting on the ground with your legs in front of you and reaching to touch your toes that's actually going to do some level of hip flexor uh stretching as well because remember that um and that's mainly going to be hamstrings but also it's going to help to do some level of stretching of those hip flexors too. Okay. Um, remember to stretch your glutes. Remember, remember to stretch your glutes. And I try to include a uh, glute stretches I saw on exrx.net um, where you sit on the ground and you take one of your, um, you, you put one leg in front of you, like lying flat on the ground and you place the, the foot of your other leg beside the knee of the leg that's lying in front of you and then you're going to place your arm your your elbow on that knee and then you're going to push and look backward and so that's actually going to help to stretch the opposite glute there then you'll do it the other way okay so make sure you stretch your glutes as well if you're going to be doing a lot of strengthening and that's just even for safety reasons because you're tightening the muscle by exercising it but then you're also going to be you're also going to need to lengthen it after you finish working it out Okay. Um, and then finally, remember to strengthen your abs or I'll say everything around here, your core, I'll, I'll phrase it as remember to strengthen your core. Um, that being your rectus abdominis, you know, the six or eight pack or whatever, as well as your, the muscles on the inside there, like your transverse abdominis and all that kind of stuff. And even in your lower back as well, because all those muscle groups around there it also help to stabilize your spine. And that's going to help <clears throat> to reduce the likelihood of back pain and help to keep your back from, you know, hyperlordosis or a sway back, as I talked about on the dry erase board. OK, hopefully this is helpful. Um, you know, train your glutes, you know, you know, all that kind of stuff is great. Just remember that your body all works together it's just it's like an orchestra of all these kind of movements so you want to make sure that you're not overemphasizing the glutes and then you end up kind of like throwing yourself out of balance so i hope this helps somebody and um you know clears things up all right y'all